Christian has allegedly pulled back the curtain on some of the family's deepest secrets. Whispers from the inner circle suggest that Christian has broken the unspoken rule and snitched on his own father to save himself. The drama unfolded after Christian was caught up in the recent raids on Diddy's homes. Is this move a bold act of truth-telling, or is there a more sinister plot at play? Find out all the details in this video. The Christian King Combs Situation these are the accusations against Christian Combs. The incident happened on a yacht. A lawsuit describes a troubling scene involving Christian and a stewardess named Grace O'Marque. Grace was responsible for taking care of the guests during the Diddy family's winter trip. However, she ended up in a difficult situation. The lawsuit, a hefty 31 pages, details a nightmarish encounter on December 28, 2022. It all started innocently enough. Christian offered Grace a shot of tequila, and she was polite about it. She accepted, not knowing the events that would follow. As the night went on, Christian suddenly switched up on her. The lawsuit alleges that Christian became aggressive, physically preventing Grace from leaving the sun deck and forcing her into taking more shots. The situation got more tense when Grace suspected her drinks might have been spiked. But the moment where things truly escalated was when Christian allegedly crossed boundaries. Grace says Christian Combs kissed and groped her against her will. During this entire exchange, someone else was present. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer working with Diddy at the time. Whether or not Christian knew about Lil Rod's presence was not specified in the lawsuit. However, the presence of this music producer added authenticity to the story. Lil Rod, who filed his own lawsuit against Diddy, allegedly captured part of the exchange on an audio recording. The complaint includes an alleged transcript where Grace is heard questioning if she was being drugged and pleading for Christian to stop touching her. Grace's lawsuit goes on to describe a scene in the yacht cinema where Christian is accused of becoming extremely aggressive. It alleges that he stripped off his clothes, grabbed Grace's arms, and tried to force her to perform oral copulation on him. The situation escalated into a physical struggle, with Grace fighting to free herself from his grasp. Just when it seemed all hope was lost, Grace's partner, sensing something was wrong, and intervened. His timely arrival allowed Grace to escape the cinema room, but the nightmare was far from over. Despite her immediate report to the ship's captain, the lawsuit suggests the incident was swept under the rug, with Diddy allegedly greasing the wheels of silence with a hefty lump of hush money. The physical evidence presented in the lawsuit includes color photos of bruises on Grace's arm, which she claims were inflicted by Christian during the assault. The emotional toll of the incident was severe, leading to the end of the relationship with her partner. She also fell into a deep depression. In the lawsuit, Christian faces a laundry list of accusations, assault, battery, and sexual assault. His father, Diddy, is not off the hook either. He's been accused of being an accomplice to his son's misdeeds, and that's because he leased the yacht where the incident took place. This means that he is being held responsible for his son's alleged assault, battery, and sexual assault, because he allowed the situation to happen on his property. Now, you you might know the crime, but do you really know who Christine Combe is and how similar or different he is from his father, Diddy? He's the first son of Sean Diddy Combs and the late Kim Porter, born on April 1st, 1998, not long after his parents started dating. He always looked up to his dad and wanted to be a performer like him. It's safe to say he learned other things from him as well. Christian, also called King Combs, started his music career right after high school. He didn't wait around and released his first EP, Sincerely, C3, in 2019. Some popular songs from the EP and include Heaven Sent and Naughty. Christian has always been inspired by his father, but the young man also had his own musical direction. In a September 2022 interview with People, he shared his passion for music, saying it had always been his dream. And despite his dad questioning him about having a backup plan, Christian stayed committed to music, saying, there is no plan B. In November 2022, he achieved a major milestone with the release of his hit song, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, featuring Kodak Black, which topped Billboard's mainstream R&B hip-hop airplay chart. He's also appeared on TV shows like Wild and Out, and the revived Making the Band. He's managed to avoid controversies until the recent allegation. The lawsuit against him was filed merely days after his father, Diddy's houses, were raided. It was a day like any other at Diddy's residence until it wasn't. A routine scroll through Instagram led to a jaw-dropping discovery on Misa Hilton's page. Misa Hilton is his stepmother. What seemed like a regular post turned into a surveillance saga, with footage showing a mini-invasion on the property. Three massive vehicles rolled up, unleashing a horde of armed agents into the compound. One agent, channeling their inner spy, decided to play with the surveillance camera like it was a joystick, pointing it away from its job and into the bushes. Smooth move, agent. Real smooth. Inside the house, the drama continued. Christian King Combs found himself in a hallway, pressed against a wall, hands on his head, while an officer moved his hands behind his back. All this while another agent stood guard with a weapon that probably doubles as a back scratcher. Justin Combs can also be seen with hands on his head, walking into the hallway 
hallway. Two agents decide to play a round of who's got the biggest gun and point their weapons at Justin. Misa Hilton took to Instagram, slamming the authorities for their aggressive tactics, especially towards her sons. She didn't hold back, calling out what she perceived as racial bias, claiming that if her sons weren't black, the situation would have been handled differently. Did Justin need laser beams aimed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun to his head while handcuffed? She said. Misa's attorney, Jeffrey Lichtman, has been looking into claims of excessive force during the incident. Dyer had previously criticized the searches, saying there was no excuse for the aggressive behavior of the authorities towards Diddy, his children, and employees. Dyer called the incident an unprecedented ambush and a witch hunt based on false accusations in civil lawsuits. He emphasized that there has been no proof of criminal or civil wrongdoing by Diddy, and that Diddy is innocent and will continue to defend his reputation. Authorities have not revealed why the raids were conducted. However, a source told Rolling Stone that they were related to a federal investigation into sex trafficking. Diddy has faced several civil lawsuits recently, accusing him of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and physical abuse. Now, this is where things get interesting. Both Justin and Christian were detained for questioning during the raids. Rumor has it Christian could be a key player in building a case against his own father. Authorities seem to think Christian might have some juicy information that could put Diddy in a tight spot. But before then, there's more. Like father, like sons. You see, during the chaos of the raids, Diddy's alleged abandonment of his son stole the spotlight. At the same time, everyone's eyes were on Christian because of the recent lawsuit. However, people are not paying attention to the fact that Justin has his own serious legal troubles. If you're scratching your head trying to keep up with Diddy's kids, Justin Combs is the OG child of Sean Diddy Combs and fashion designer Misa Hilton. Born in the Big Apple, Justin stepped into the limelight on the hit MTV show My Super Sweet 16 alongside his famous father. While Justin's early years were undoubtedly filled with glitz and glamour, he didn't just ride on his family's fame, this guy decided to add a twist to the tale. After completing high school, Justin didn't just kick back and relax. He decided to hit the books at the prestigious UCLA. Justin didn't just go to UCLA to be a student, he also showed off his skills on the football field as a defensive back for the UCLA Bruins. And guess what? He was so good that he earned himself a scholarship to play for the team. In 2016, Justin hit a major life goal by becoming the first male in the Combs family to graduate from college. Justin's Instagram post featuring him in full graduation regalia with his beaming family, including his mom, Misa Hilton, and his dad, Diddy, was a moment of pure joy. Speaking of his parents, Misa Hilton couldn't contain her pride, sharing a snapshot of herself, Diddy, and others at the graduation ceremony. The caption was overflowing with love and pride, as any parent would be on such a momentous occasion. The caption says, The proud parents, we are so proud of you and love you so much. But let's not forget, Justin's not just about caps and gowns, he's also dipping his toes into hosting. In 20 2021, he took the helm of his own TV show, Respectfully Justin, where he chatted up celebs like Saweetie and Chris Brown. Now here's the twist. Justin, for all his accomplishments, seems to have inherited a bit of his dad's not-so-great traits. It's like inheriting your dad's good looks, but also his questionable dance moves, which is a mixed bag if I'm putting it mildly. The authorities are investigating Diddy and his son, Justin, for a shooting incident. Lil Rod's lawsuit helped reveal this incident. Lil Rod accuses Diddy of covering up a shooting near Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles in 2022, which he claims was a robbery. The lawsuit alleges that Diddy and his son Justin were involved in an altercation with a mysterious figure known only as G in a studio bathroom. The tension escalated to a shocking climax when Lil Rod discovered G shot on the bathroom floor after Diddy and Justin exited the scene. Lil Rod, caught in the middle of this scenario, heroically rushed G to the studio's front, where an ambulance awaited, fighting to save his life. However, the plot thickens when Diddy allegedly instructs Lil Rod to lie to the police, claiming ignorance of the incident. Adding to the intrigue, Justin denied any involvement. However, the plot twists yet again with a revelation from a source within the LA police confirming Diddy and Justin's connection to the ongoing investigation. The situation takes a sinister turn when you realize that these events are distinct from the sex trafficking allegations. However, this isn't the first time Justin has been caught in a controversy involving his father. In June of 2015, Diddy found himself in a bit of a pickle with then UCLA assistant football coach Sal Alosi. It all started innocently enough, with Alosi giving Diddy's son, Justin Combs, a typical coach's pep talk. I don't care if your dad's here, this is UCLA. I'm gonna treat you just like I treat everyone else. But things took a turn after practice when Diddy and his son visited Alosi's office and an argument broke out. Reports say Diddy grabbed Alosi and in a fit of frustration, even swung a kettlebell at an intern. Diddy's team quickly jumped to his defense, claiming that any actions taken by Mr. Combs were just him being defensive, trying to protect himself and his son. The LA district attorney must have seen it the same way because no assault charges were filed 
filed against Diddy. So given this past controversy, many people are not surprised to see Justin caught up in Lil Rod's lawsuit. Lil Rod, who contributed to nine songs on Diddy's album, The Love Album Off The Grid, claims his life took a turn for the worse after working with Diddy. Their agreement, though informal, had Lil Rod working closely with Diddy, which meant living the high life in various locales from Los Angeles to New York City, Miami, and even aboard a yacht in the U.S. Virgin Islands. But the glamour of their partnership quickly lost its shine. Lil Rod paints a picture of his time with Diddy as more than just producing music. It was a reel of unwanted recordings and uncomfortable encounters. He alleges that Diddy repeatedly crossed the line, touching him inappropriately despite Lil Rod's objections. Lil Rod found himself in a moral dilemma as Diddy allegedly pressured him into a sexual encounter with another producer, promising Grammy glory in return. When Lil Rod sought help, confiding in Diddy's chief of staff, Christina K.K. Corum, her response was shockingly dismissive, likening Diddy's behavior to his infamous persona. Folks are now drawing comparisons to KK's relationship with Diddy and the infamous Ghislaine Maxwell's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. Lil Rod accuses Diddy of having videos of people engaging in sexual activities in his homes, possibly recorded without their knowledge. These videos allegedly include incidents with underage girls and sex workers. The lawsuit portrays Diddy as a man who believes he is above the law, claiming he has a lot of evidence to control people. It also alleges that Diddy gave spiked drinks to underage individuals and sex workers at his homes and was involved with drugs and unregistered illegal guns. In a surprising turn, the updated complaint reveals that a private investigator linked to Diddy allegedly tried to bribe a friend of Lil Rod's to say negative things about him. Diddy's lawyer, Sean Holly, denies these accusations, stating that Lil Rod is lying and only seeking undeserved money. Holly claims they have strong evidence disproving Lil Rod's claims. Holly tried to show proof to Lil Rod's lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, but he did not respond. Holly said they would handle these false claims in court and take action against anyone who made them. Now, Lil Rod's lawsuit isn't just about Diddy. It also accuses several famous people in the entertainment industry, including Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Charles Grange, former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarian, and others. But those aren't the only names mentioned in the lawsuit. Other names mentioned in the lawsuits. Lil Rod says the illegal activities happened in these places where famous people mixed with criminal behavior. Lil Rod's complaint doesn't shy away from naming names. It boldly includes an Oscar-winning actor, a member of the British royal family, and a prominent figure from the rap duo City Girls. The lawsuit alleges that Diddy was grooming Lil Rod to be passed off to his friends for sexual purposes, with one such friend being the Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Lil Rod claims that in January 2023, he was introduced to Gooding on Diddy's yacht. As the evening progressed, Lil Rod alleges that he was left alone with Gooding Jr in a makeshift studio on the yacht. It was in this secluded setting that the encounter took a disturbing turn. The lawsuit describes in graphic detail how Gooding Jr. allegedly began to touch, grope, and fondle Lil Rod, invading his personal space and crossing boundaries without consent. Lil Rod describes the actor's hands roaming over his legs, upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. The complaint recounts Lil Rod's growing discomfort, his attempts to reject Gooding Jr.'s advances, and the actor's persistent disregard for his his clear lack of consent. It wasn't until Lil Rod forcibly pushed him away that the assault ceased. The impact of this encounter, as stated in the lawsuit, was severe, leaving Lil Rod with not only physical injury, but also emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages. The lawsuit then demands monetary damages from Gooding Jr. and Diddy, holding them accountable for the incident on the yacht. The allegations against Gooding Jr. are particularly shocking given his status as an acclaimed actor who has graced the silver screen with performances that have garnered critical acclaim. The mention of Prince Harry in Rodney Lil Rod's lawsuit against Diddy adds an unexpected royal dimension to the drama. The inclusion of the British royal is not an accusation of wrongdoing. The lawsuit uses Prince Harry's name to show how being linked to Diddy could boost one's status. It describes a world where wealthy and influential people, including celebrities, athletes, politicians, and even royalty, came together at Diddy's lavish parties. These gatherings weren't just social. They were also opportunities for Diddy to grow his influence and show off his impressive connections. Prince Harry's connection to Diddy dates back to a tribute concert for his late mother, Princess Diana, in 2007. Photos from the event show Harry and his brother William with music industry stars like Diddy and Kanye West. Although this meeting may seem insignificant, the lawsuit uses it to highlight the elite circles Diddy moved in and the power he wielded. The lawsuit suggests that being close to Diddy had its benefits, like getting invitations to the best parties and meeting top celebrities. Mentioning Prince Harry's name in the lawsuit shows how influential Diddy was and the high caliber people he attracted. Even though Prince Harry and Diddy met and seemed to hit it off, they didn't become close friends. Diddy mentioned wanting to hang out with Harry in London, but there's no evidence that they ever became more than acquaintances. 
Lil Rod's lawsuit also zeroed in on Young Miami, whose real name is Koresha Romeka Brownlee. The lawsuit portrays Young Miami differently from her image as a rapper, claiming she was involved in Diddy's illegal activities. The allegations against Young Miami are serious and have many parts. The lawsuit says she helped transport a substance called Tucci, which is a mix of ecstasy and cocaine that looks pink, across state lines for Diddy. This accusation suggests she played a key role in Diddy's alleged drug trafficking. According to the lawsuit, there was an incident last year where Young Miami was called upon to deliver Tucci to Diddy during rehearsals for the Something in the Water Festival in Virginia. The narrative describes a scene where Lil Rod personally witnessed Diddy consuming cocaine in his dressing room and subsequently requesting Tucci, which had been forgotten. In response, Christina Corum, identified in the lawsuit as Combs' chief of staff, is said to have contacted Young Miami, who then allegedly brought the drug on a private jet from Miami. Beyond the drug trafficking claims, the lawsuit also implicates Young Miami as one of the women purportedly receiving a monthly fee to serve as one of Diddy's sex workers. The lawsuit further alleges that Young Miami's cousin, referred to as Jane Doe One, played a direct role in the narrative of misconduct. On Thanksgiving Day of 2022, Jane Doe One is accused of sexually assaulting Lil Rod, an incident that reportedly occurred when she burst into the bathroom and began groping him. In the wake of these allegations, Young Miami's response has been one of denial and defense. Like, I'm a -er. After rapper 50 Cent shared a video clip of her on the Jason Lee show, where she referred to herself as a whore, Young Miami clarified that her words were taken out of context. She denied ever engaging in sex work, stating, I'm not a prostitute, I never sold a day in my life, and I hate how this is getting spun. As Rodney Lil Rod Jones' lawsuit against Diddy unfolds, more people are mentioned, each with their own part in the accusations. Daphne Joy and Jade are some of them. Their alleged roles show a bigger picture of the network Lil Rod claims Diddy created. Daphne Joy and Jade, both known for their social media presence and modeling careers, are named in the lawsuit as recipients of a monthly stipend from Diddy, allegedly in exchange for their participation as sex workers. Daphne Joy, a model and former partner of 50 Cent with whom she shares a son, has publicly refuted these claims. In a statement filled with anger, she expressed her deep hurt over the allegations, labeling them as 100% false and a form of character assassination. She has declared her intent to seek legal remedies against both Lil Rod and his attorney for the defamation she has suffered. Jade Ramey, an Instagram model and self-proclaimed wellness coach has also responded. She acknowledged a past romantic relationship, but denied any correlation with the allegations made in the lawsuit. Christina Koram is accused of facilitating the retrieval and distribution of drugs for Diddy's consumption. The lawsuit alleges that she required employees, including housekeepers and chefs, to carry pouches filled with various substances such as cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tootsie. Lil Rod claims he was forced to carry one of these pouches against his will. The lawsuit also includes Justin Combs, accused of being told by Coram to get prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers. The lawsuit says Grange didn't make sure the money given to Diddy and Love Records was used properly. It says Grange and UMG gave them money without checking how it was spent, which might have allowed the things Lil Rod talks about to happen. Aaron Hall is another notable name mentioned in one of the earlier lawsuits. The accuser, Liza Gardner, brought forth her accusations in the New York Supreme Court, naming both Diddy and Hall as defendants in a case that dates back to the early 90s. She alleges that at a music industry event hosted by MCA Records in 1990, when she was just 16 years old, she and a friend were sexually assaulted in Aaron Hall's apartment. The claim is that Diddy coerced her into a sexual encounter and that Hall, following this, barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced himself upon her. The accusations do not end there. Gardner further alleges an encounter where Diddy, in a state of panic over the possibility of his girlfriend discovering the incident, found Gardner at her home and choked her until she lost consciousness. A piece of evidence cited in the complaint is a YouTube video where Hall, in an interview, casually mentions that Puffy Diddy's moniker during the 90s had witnessed him having sex. This statement, while not an admission of guilt, has been used to draw connections between the two men's alleged behavior. Attempts to reach Aaron Hall for comment were unsuccessful, and his legal representation had not been identified in court documents at the time of the lawsuit's filing. Harv Pierre's name also surfaces amidst the legal turmoil, a figure deeply woven into the fabric of Sean Diddy Combs' musical empire. As Diddy's first employee at Bad Boy Records and the former president of Bad Boy Entertainment, Pierre's legacy is intertwined with the success stories of iconic artists like Biggie and Faith Evans. However, the allegations presented in two separate lawsuits cast a shadow over his storied career. The first lawsuit, filed anonymously in the New York Supreme Court, paints a disturbing picture of Pierre's alleged conduct. A former assistant at Bad Boy Records accuses Pierre of exploiting his position of power to groom, exploit, and sexually assault her. The lawsuit implicates Diddy and his companies as enablers of this abuse, suggesting 
a systemic issue within the organization. In a second separate legal action filed in the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of New York, another plaintiff, also filing anonymously as Jane Doe, recounts a tale from 2003 when she was 17. The complaint alleges a scenario where Diddy, Pierre, and an unnamed third defendant are accused of sexual assault and sex trafficking. The plaintiff describes a sequence of events starting with Pierre smoking crack cocaine and forcing her to perform oral sex, followed by a trip from Detroit to New York City on a private jet. Once in New York, at a studio owned by Diddy, the plaintiff claims they were provided with drugs and alcohol before being sexually assaulted. Pierre's response to the allegations in the second lawsuit was one of strong denial. This is a tale of fiction. I have never participated in, witnessed, nor heard of anything like this ever, he stated as reported by TMZ. He dismissed the accusations as disgusting and a desperate attempt for financial gain. But that's all speculation because there is a chance that Justin and Christian might turn on their father if the situation gets out of hand. I mean, they are billionaires kids they are soft but i might be wrong what do you think if you enjoyed this video click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos